say again, it's good to be here this morning. Appreciate each one that's come. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, I don't know, you think a lot of different things as you're trying to study and, and to come, and uh, and you can't help but wonder who you might can help. And you get to thinking about pre- uh, people that you are in church with every Sunday, and I, I'm sure every pastor does that. And uh, this morning I was sitting over there, things was being said uh, before prayer this morning at Sunday school, and the Lord let me know, he said, you preach for me, mm-hmm. not for everybody else, yeah. not for who you think is going to be there, you just preach for me. And uh, I'm thankful that he reminds me of that, doesn't matter how long you, you try to stand, you need a reminder from time to time from the Lord uh, why you're doing this and who you're doing it for. We're going to look in the book of John in the sixth chapter <coughs> for a reading lesson. Hmm. Starting with verse 1, we'll read a few verse of scripture, several things to, to read. I don't know how much of it I'll read, but I'll say this. <coughs> I'd encourage you to read every verse. There's 71 of them in this book, this little chapter right here. A uh, lot to uh, uh, read from it, a lot to learn from it. We're going to start at verse 1. It says, And after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which was the Sea of Tiberias. And the great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he had done on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And when Jesus lifted up, then lifted up his eyes and saw a great uh, company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here, which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men to sit down. And there was much grass in the place, So the men sat down in a number of about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were sat down, and likewise the fishes as much as they would. And they were filled, and he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Now with my mistakes in reading, that's verses 1 through 13 of the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter for a reading lesson. And as we find here, this is a a common uh I don't want to say story, but a lot of people call them stories. But I mean, it's it's just a recorded history is what that it is. And we find that a lot of people were following the Lord because of what He'd done. They're all their faith that they had in Him is what they could see. I certainly hope that all my faith in Him ain't just in what I can see. I hope it's not based off of just the sight because the scriptures teach us that that's not faith if we only believe in that which we can see well we find that as they gathered there together he knew the passover was nigh and the lord he he had every step calculated uh before he ever spoke the world into existence this word was already as though it had all happened he knew everything and he seen that great number and he knew the Passover was nigh and that they were going to need to observe that Passover. And he asked, he said, when shall you buy bread that these may eat? Now he knew that there was no way. He said, he said this, he asked him this to prove him. He knew that he didn't have enough 
to feed them with. That's what a lot of people's worried about right now. Yeah. They worried about having enough to eat. That's what they were worried about. They were worried about having enough to eat. And here he answered, he said, there's 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. Now there's a whole lot of things that are not sufficient. And if you look this word up in the Hebrew, it, uh, you can look up the different uh, uh, ways that it's used uh, within the context of a, of a sentence. It can mean worthy. You can look over in the book, I believe it is over in 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 3 and 5 says, not that we are sufficient as above ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. No, that word there, how it's used is our worthiness is not of ourselves. But here when it's used, the word means enough. There's not enough. There's not enough. There's not enough to feed them. I'm sure that when Philip uh, answered him, it was probably discouraging. Look around, see this good number. As the scriptures say, there was about 5,000 people that showed up. There's not enough. There's not enough. It says here that every one of them may take a little. That'd be pretty discouraging. I, I have seen pictures of hard times in this country, but I've only seen pictures. And I've only been able to read about it where people had to stand in line and wait for some soup, wait for a little bread, wait for a little something to be given to them. I, I've, I've never known that, but I might. We all might. But here we look and we find that there wasn't enough for all of them. And Andrew uh, said, well, there's a lad here. He's got five barley loaves and he's got two small fishes. <coughs> Well, he's got that. But what difference is that going to make? How's that going to help anything? Well, the fact of the matter is, is they had every reason to look upon the situation as bleak as it might be, know that there wasn't enough for everybody to eat, uh, know that there wasn't enough to supply, even just a little bit for everybody to have. But the fact of the matter is, all the odds were in their favor because the Lord was there. The Lord was there. Now they didn't know what the Lord was about to do. Their faith, just like ours, gets weak sometimes. And we look and he said, make the men to sit down. Have everybody sit down. And it just says, so the men sat down and numbers about 5,000. It don't say nothing about the women. You know, I, I, it's just how the scriptures are written. Uh, a lot of times it'll say it was this many men, not counting the women and children. So we just know there was 5,000 actual men that were there, not even counting the women that were following and the little children that were there. And he took those loaves and he gave thanks over it. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. We need to be thankful when we get down to eat. We need to bow our heads and thank God if it ain't nothing but a bologna sandwich. If we're eating cheese and crackers, we need to thank God. Because I can assure you every good thing, everything we have, it comes from Him. It is not something you can say, well, I went to the store to pick it up. God and dry up the stores. We're seeing that. We can see that things can be taken. And you know what? We can hoard up all that we want, but it'll finally run out. It'll run out. Sooner or later, it'll run out. So I want to tell you right now, and that's how I was raised. I was raised in a home that we prayed and gave thanks to God. Somebody said grace. That's what we said. They'd say, turn grace. Turn thanks. For the food that we was about to eat. And we used to say a little model prayer when we was a little kid. We used to say that and you know what? Even though before I was ever saved, that taught me we needed to be thankful for what God's given us. And it ain't just the food that we've got we ought to be thankful for, but everything. Amen. But the Lord, He gave thanks over this. And I want you to notice that He's the one that distributed this. They gathered it up and they gave it to Him and He began, began to distribute it out. If we have a need, I'm going to tell you what, you don't need a lot of people are wanting today. We're looking to our government to supply our needs. 
Then after that, they're looking and they're calling upon the churches to supply our needs. Now, I believe the church ought to serve its role in helping supply needs. Amen. Better job we ought to do. Better job that I ought to do as a member of the Lord's church of helping to supply the needs of those around us. But I can assure you we all better be looking in one direction for our needs to be distributed unto us and that is unto our Lord, our God. Yeah. He began to distribute these out to disciples and they began to take them out uh, uh, to the people. And it says here, he told them as they had done, he said when they were filled, when they had eat all they could eat. Now they didn't have but 200 penny worth and five barley loaves and some few fishes there. They had eat till they were filled. He said, gather up the fragments that they remain, that there's nothing lost. The Lord knew there was plenty left over. No. After He had given them all that He had given them, they had all ate to the full. There was nobody left hungry. He said, gather up the fragments, and they gathered it up, and it says that they filled up here 12 baskets of the fragments from those five barley loaves. I can tell you right now, there's been times where I was hungry spiritually. Yep. Mm -hmm. Spiritually hungry. Needing the Lord. And He didn't just give me almost enough. He gave me enough. And I'm going to tell you what, our Lord is enough to fill us to the full. Mm -hmm. And to have plenty left over. I find in the Scriptures in the Old Testament... Uh, in the book of Exodus, in the 16th chapter, as the children were bought out of bondage and they were going along the way, uh, they sound just like us today. It doesn't take very long for them to begin to complain. Right. Sounds like Baptist people to me. Mm -hmm. People that will complain. We're good at that. Kevin's good at that. They begin to complain and murmur against God and they begin to murmur against Moses. They said here in verse 3, says, And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by flesh pots. And when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth to the wilderness to kill us and the whole assembly with hunger. They got along a little ways, didn't have uh, what they thought they needed. They weren't as... Well... It wasn't as readily available. We're pretty spoiled. They were spoiled. They were so spoiled, they'd have rather been back in bondage sitting by a flesh pot than to been free. I'm going to tell you what, if we ain't careful, we'd rather be a part of the world and have depended on it than to be free and there with the Lord. Right. And they began to uh, uh, complain about this. Well, the Lord heard them. We better be careful how much we complain. The Lord hears us. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to say it out loud. You can have that murmur in your heart. Mm -hmm. And God hears it. Now, the Lord was about to do something that ain't never been done. Never had been done before. They had no basis. You know, that's what faith is. is believing in the Lord when there's no basis sometimes to base anything on that He's going to come through. Or how He's going to come through. The Lord began to tell Moses, He says, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you. Now I believe Moses took him at his word. I know how I'd have been. I've been like, well, I want to know how you're going to do that. I'm going to rain he uh, bread from heaven down. As the Scripture says, He said, I'm going to bring quail up. You're going to eat quail and in the morning you're going to go out as the Scriptures say. It says in the morning you're going to be filled with bread. And we look here in verse 13. It says and they come up. It came to pass that at the evening the quails came up and covered the camp. They didn't have to go hunt them. The Lord brought it to them. Everything they needed He brought to them when He saw that they could do nothing about their need. It wasn't that they was lazy to work. It wasn't that they didn't want to. They had no food to eat. They had no quail. They didn't have anything to look upon 
I'm sure if there had been trees and fruit and things like that, they would have been gathering from that. But there wasn't nothing. Sometimes there's a lot of people in this country that's too lazy to work. They're too lazy to work. I'm going to tell you what, we don't need to be too lazy to work. But these people, that wasn't the case. It says, and the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning a dew lay around about the host. And the dew that lay was gone up and behold upon the faces of the wilderness there lay a small round thing. As small as the hoarfrost on the ground. I've studied that a little bit. Looks like it was uh, almost like a crystallized thing that was left there. And when the children of Israel saw it they said one to another it is manna. And that literally means what's about to be said. For they wist not what it was. What is it? Yeah. It's what it means. Man, what is it? And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. And this thing which he, the Lord, hath commanded, gather of it every man according to his eating, an uh, omer for every man, according to the number of your persons, Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. You know, I'd be good scriptures for our leaders to be reading today. Yeah. For people to be reading today. We need to take enough for our household. Mm -hmm. Not more. Take enough for our household. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more and some less. Some houses were bigger. Some people had more people in them than they did others. And when they did meet it out with an omer, because as I study this, it was called a uh, coriander seed. It was white. And they took those little seeds, these things, and they would meet them out into a bread for them to eat. And they would meet it out in an omer, with an omer, and he that gathered had... Uh, he gathered much, had nothing over. And he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. So we look here and we find what I see in this is that them that had to gather for, say, ten in a household, when they gathered, when it all worked itself out, they had enough for ten. And if there was a household of three, when they gathered, when it was meted out and it was served, they had enough for three. And they weren't to have any more than what they needed. And anybody that didn't listen to that, the worms would come on it. It gathered it up. And it caused it to stink. That's what the scriptures say. I'm going to tell you what, the Lord gave me enough when I was a nine year old boy. He gave me enough for my household. Me. Right. Yeah. When he saved my soul as a little boy, lost and out in sin, he didn't give me enough for me and the next thing. He gave enough for me. It was sufficient. It was plenteous for me. It was not something that I could provide myself. It was not something I could work for or that I could gather. But when I had come to the end of my road and there was nothing else that I could do, God brought to me that which I hungered for, and He gave me salvation. Mm -hmm. And gave me enough. <laughs> he gave me enough to get home with too. I don't have just enough to live this life with. I've got enough to get me home. Amen. You ever been that way with your gas tank before? Mm -hmm. You get to looking and that light would come on and you'd think, you know... How far can I go? You know, as you get a little bit more used to a vehicle, you know exactly how far you can go after that light comes on for you've got to stop and gas up again. It takes you a little trial and error to get more comfortable. How long can I go before it ain't enough? I can tell you what, I might get weak in faith and the flame within might get to flicker a little. But I can tell you that tank will never run out. What he done for me as a nine-year-old boy is enough 
to get me home. Plenty enough. Gathered enough that day that it has fed me all my days. But you know what? That ain't all that He's fed me with. No. He gave me that and He's fed me with so much more over the life that He has blessed me with. Nothing that I have done but what He has done for me. Uh, that there has been times that I have looked and I have thought, Lord, how can this be? And son, He just rained manna down. Out of nowhere. Yeah. He'd provide things in a manner that I never believed could ever be happening. And I'm going to tell you, you that are here today, you're going to face that someday. Yeah. You're going to face an obstacle. You're going to face a, a situation. Your thing's going to come up in your life and you're going to wonder and the devil's going to try to make you doubt and he's going to try to make you murmur against God. What I would advise you to do is to get on those knees and look to the one that saved your soul and ask him for the help, the sufficiency that is not of yourselves. Even the apostle Paul says, I'm not worthy. I'm not of myself anything. He said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. He realized his sufficiency, his worthiness was not of himself. It was of God and that what he needed was not of him. It was of God Almighty. We go back to this lesson and we see how that they begin to follow Him a little more. I imagine I would have too, wouldn't you? Yeah. If they told us today that if we went over to Herman Springs to that dollar store that's over there, little old store that that's the only place around had toilet paper, they had a supply for everybody, I believe we'd go, wouldn't you? I know this country would go if they was looking for toilet paper. Yeah. You tell them to look for salvation and they won't hunt for it at all. Mm -hmm. Ain't that a shame? Amen. Right. But if that's the only little place around that had any of our natural needs to supply, I know where Kevin would be headed. I'd be headed to Hermit Springs. Well, here they could see what the Lord was doing and they hang, I want to hang around where this man is. He's doing things that nobody else can do. He went across the sea, I believe it here in the Scriptures, uh, uh, over to Capernaum. See, towards Capernaum is where they went. And there was a great uh, wind, and we know that story as it's been told many times. And they went over. And it says here in verse 24, when, uh, when the uh, people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took ship. They went to hunt for him, and they came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. You know, some people, the only reason they seek for Jesus is what he can put in their mouth. Yeah. They're only looking for the outward man and the needs that they feel that they need and have. That is what they seek Jesus for. There are people, and I'm not against giving. I believe we ought to give to the Lord's church and to His cause. Monetarily, I believe we ought to give. But there are people that they will tithe and they will give great amounts of money to God only hoping that He will give them monetarily back. They only give and they only work in hoping that He will give them back. I'm going to tell you what, that's not the kind of giver we're supposed to be. The giver we're supposed to be is to give hoping nothing in return. To serve our God, that's the kind of giver we ought to be of our heart. And giving and looking to the Lord and that if He doesn't give us anything, that we'll still go and give. And I'm not talking about monetary at this point. I'm talking about of ourselves to God. You let a lot of people have a little trouble in their life and you'll see some that they'll cling harder to God. A few will. Many, they'll take care and run. They'll run and say, well, I, everything was good. They are fair weather. Servants is what they are. As long as things are good and there's no ripples or waves, they'll look to God. But the very minute that they think that God has not helped them, their faith gets weak and they, they run. I'm going to tell you what, that's how a lot of people are. And I believe the reason at the beginning here that these people were seeking the Lord is solely for food. That's it. I look to Him for my food too, but I look for Him a whole lot more. It says, and when they had found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? When did you come here? Why didn't you tell us? <laughs> Jesus answered uh, them, said, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, ye seek me not because 
You saw miracles. But because you did eat the loaves and were filled. He knew their heart. Yeah. He knows our heart this morning. Amen. Are we here because we think this will gain us some favor of God that He'll take care of our physical needs? Or are we here to seek Him, to serve Him, and to praise Him? Labor not for meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for every man it for him that hath God the Father's seal. And they said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Now there, if we stopped right there, boy, there's a whole lot of people that take that verse of Scripture and twist it. Work the works of God. Does that mean going out here and giving of what we have to somebody else that's just as great as me? Well, that's a good thing for us to do. Does that mean that we would go out here and try to uh, help people in, in, that are sick and down. That, that's a good thing to do, but that's not what the Lord's talking about here. The Lord is not insinuating or teaching us with this verse of Scripture that they ask, what should we do that we work the works of God? God's not going to give them an answer that says you need to do this many good things to inherit something. That's what a lot of people teach, but it's wrong. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on Him whom He has sent. You want to work the works of the Lord, uh, what He says that we must do to have this everlasting life, to have that assurance, is to believe on His Son whom He sent in this world to die for the sins of all mankind. Yeah. That's what he said that all men must do. This is not a Baptist belief. It is, but it is a gospel belief. Mm -hmm. It belongs to every man, woman, and child on every nation to take heed to these words that they too must believe on Him, God, that is sent. Mm -hmm. At this point, you can look and find that many of them looked at Him as a prophet. He wasn't a prophet. Mm -hmm. He was the Son of God. Yeah. He was much more than some man that was born of woman and had a natural father. Why, he was the Son of God, sinless. But they looked at him as a prophet. They heard this. They still questioned it. They said, therefore, unto him, What sign shewest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? Show us something. Show me something. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are you going to do so that we can confirm that this is right? I can tell you right now, it's already been confirmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, it's already been confirmed. His son come to this world, suffered and died and rose again on the third day, made His ascension on the clouds and sits at the right hand of God. If they don't believe that report, then they will die and go to hell. Right. The report has been made. You don't have to see God rain down manna out of heaven. You don't have to see uh, the sky split open. You don't have to see some great natural work to know that Jesus is the Son of God. Right. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you, speaking of their ancestors, not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto uh, to the world. They said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Why, if, he's give, if the Lord's giving bread unto everlasting life, give it of us. Sounds like that woman at the whale, don't it? Get me of this life. That I thirst no more. Give it to me. I would like to have some of that. If any, but they're looking to the natural sense of a physical bread or natural water. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He that come to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen and believe not. I'm going to tell you what he also says that blessed are they which have not seen yet have believed. I'm going to tell you what he says here to them. He said, I am the bread of life. I am what is sufficient for you. Yeah. I am what will fill you. 
I am what can give you to the fullest and there be a lot left over. He said, I am He. I am the bread that you must seek. And I'll give you plenty of what you need. And after that, you'll still have to gather up the fragments. There'll be so much more left after I've given you salvation. There's much more. Much more for you to gather up in your life. Much more things for me to give you. Wow, this was a hard saying for them. Wow, uh, the Lord has to draw. He told them ahead they had to have to eat of His flesh and drink of His blood. There's many in the world today, they take these Scriptures and they tw twist it like we've got to have the Lord's Supper every Sunday we meet if we have any hope of getting saved. That ain't what it's teaching. Right. That ain't what it's teaching whatsoever. What it's teaching is that we must partake of Him. That's right. Mm -hmm. Through faith and repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, a broken heart and a contrite spirit, trusting in Him with all our heart, depending upon Him and the sacrifice in which He has made, that that is enough and that if He so desire, which He will, in whatever way, that He will take us and save us, that He will and He'll save that soul. I've heard people say, you can kill me, Lord. Just save me. Just like that. They were willing to give up even their own life. I've heard of them that said, you can take my mom and my daddy in the moment that they were willing to give them up. The Lord saved their soul. Yeah. I heard, and I don't even know who it was, I've heard this story so long in my life of an account of somebody that was holding on to a handkerchief. Yeah. And they would not let it go. And the minute that they let it go, that the Lord saved their soul. I've heard of them that the Lord would say, get down in the floor. Just that drawing to get in the floor. If you'll just get in the floor, I'll save your soul. And before their knees get hit, that God had saved their soul. I've heard of them that said, if you'll just go to the bathroom, I'll save you. Before they could get there, God had saved their soul. Just just go to the altar of prayer before they can ever get there. God, He doesn't save them. Witness to man. He come to the altar one Sunday there at Goodwill. He was an older gentleman. He didn't know this way. He heard a little. He come to the altar. We bowed down in prayer and I raised up. Others were still praising. praying. He looked at me. He said He did it before I hit my knees. <laughs> God is the one that will fill that person up, that will take out that hunger that is in that soul. There ain't anywhere else to look Why people heard all these sayings and they begin to fall away. There's going to be a lot of people who fall away from this. Yeah. There'll be a lot of people who fall away from this. The minute that we're physically hungry, have a little trouble, they'll fall away. Mm -hmm. Even save people. Yeah. Minute that things ain't smooth, the minute that you don't understand why, the minute that it creeps in your thoughts, how could the Lord let this happen? You ever had that? You ever felt that way? We're bound to felt that way somewhere along. Let's be honest. We ain't gonna be honest anywhere. Surely we can be honest here. We felt that way, not questioning God, but just wondering why well, God would she. Allow this to happen. Yeah. He asked those twelve, will you go away also? Are you going to cut tail and run? Mm -hmm. All those others. Five thousand. Then they started following. I don't know if all that five thousand men want to get on boats and come over to Captain Nam or not. But a bunch did. And then he began to teach them a little harder things for them to understand. A little bit more meat. And they didn't want to hear that. It's a big difference between 5,000 and 12. I've got news for you. There's a lot of people be saved that will never take the full word of God. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot more that will never be saved because they will not believe the report of our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Will you also go away? And then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. We believe and are sure that Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. For <clears throat> where else would we go, Lord? Yeah. You have the words. Right. They didn't say, you have food. You have the natural supplies. 
you have the words of eternal life. That's why they followed him. Why do we follow him? Do we follow him so he'll look upon our faith or look upon our dedication and say, I'll give them everything they need. He's done that for us. Lord, we're a rich generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rich. Rich. You might say, well, I don't have a big house. I'm going to tell you what, we're all rich. Rich beyond any imagination. You know, it ain't been many generations ago. Uh, my uh, uh, dad, if it hadn't been for one of his uncles, wouldn't have had shoes on his feet. Because they were so poor, they couldn't afford to buy my daddy's shoes. My pop been sick and didn't have money. That ain't been that long ago. My daddy's 74 years old. He was just a boy. That ain't been that long ago that they didn't have shoes to put on his feet. There were people in hunger and in need and people that didn't have running water. I remember going to the outhouse at my grandparents' house. Mm -hmm. The only water it was in was into the old crank washing machine. That was it. Well, we thought we was high cotton to get to go out there. I looked. Yeah. I, I mean, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a mansion in this world compared to Paul's house. You know why? When you went out there, you know what I felt in there? Love. Because this thing right here, this book right here was always open. It was always. I'd never seen it closed. Son, they talked about the Lord all the time and Granny hung out things and they didn't have nothing. My daddy had to buy them their vehicles. Daddy got tired of them as they got older to wanting them to go out. Daddy was blessed by the Lord. He put in a bathroom. Oh, so I didn't have to go out like that no more. I used to get washed up in the old wash tub yeah. when I was a kid in there. And they had old lights. So we didn't have no switches. We had to reach out there for it. That's faith too. That's a good one to use when you're preaching on it too. But son, they was rich. Let me tell you something. They was rich. They didn't follow the Lord. They didn't serve God. They didn't do it because of what God was giving them of the natural sense, son. They was doing it because they loved Him. Amen. They loved Him and they trusted in Him and they knew that He would save His grandchildren and the ones after. And when Pa got sick, Hon, he didn't tell me to go be something big. He said, Kev, hold on to the Lord and make sure you take your kids to church someday. I wouldn't even marry him. Hadn't even met my wife at that time. Hadn't even, wasn't even near that. But that's what he was thinking about. That next generation going on because he knew who had filled him in his life. Who had given him everything that he had for his soul salvation in the blessings of this life. I mean the spiritual manna that comes down from heaven. Why, well, I tell you what, I've seen it here in revival meetings that I've been able to be here. I've seen it at other places. And I can tell you what, son, he's got, he's got the words of eternal life. He will fill us up. And I'm going to tell you what, he's enough for me. Yeah. yeah. He's enough for me. Is He enough for you? Is He enough? Does He have to answer every whim that we have to be enough? No. I prayed for many a thing that He didn't give me. Yeah. For my benefit, He didn't give me. I didn't understand it. But it was for my benefit. Is He enough? Is he enough? Everything else starts falling away. I said not long ago, he can bring this country to its knees. Yeah. And he's a doing it. Yeah. He is a doing it. I told Brother Ronnie this morning as we were sitting here talking. The only way for us to see this subside is to repent. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. They might come up with a vaccine, but I'm going to tell you what, we need to repent. I ain't talking about, yeah, the world needs to repent, but I'm going to tell you what God's people need to do a little of it too. But is He enough for you? 
these kids, bless their hearts. We've told them and told them and told them about all the things they need to do in life to prepare themselves for careers and all that. But we want them to be big things. I'm going to tell you what, you be what the Lord wants you to be and it'll be enough. Right. You do what the Lord wants you to do for a living and it'll be enough. You have the house that the Lord gives you and wants you to have and it'll be enough. You give your children what they need of this life and then a few things and it'll be enough. But I can assure you the most important thing you can give them is this old way. Right. Coming to the Lord's house and I can assure you you don't have to give them any more than what you were given. You don't have to give them bells and whistles. What we still offer them is enough. An old altar to pray at is enough. An old knee right way is enough. Telling them that they must be in trouble and sorrow is enough. Telling them that they must let go of everything and trust in the Lord is enough. Not having special things, entertaining things. Don't need that. This is enough. Coming in, if we met every day and didn't do another thing as far as the entertaining things, what we have is enough because it's of God. It's enough. We don't have to have bigger and better and brighter. Son, we need Jesus Christ. We need our Lord to shine bright at Friendship Church. I mean shine bright. You know how He's going to shine bright? If the lights go out in the next minute, the light that will shine will be through you. This church. But He's enough. Is He enough for us? I'm sure I've showed the Lord a time or two that I didn't think He was enough. I'm sorry for that. But how I worked, how my thought process was to have things and to work hard to acquire those things, I prayed I was showing the Lord that He wasn't enough. And I ain't against having Don't all everybody go put their house on the market tomorrow. I'm not saying that. But we need to be there with content yeah. a little bit more from yeah. time to time with the things that God gives us. Yeah. I pray that the Lord's pleased with this effort. It's been pretty weak on my part. I feel pretty ashamed that I haven't lived my life so it was clear that I believe the Lord is enough. He's given me enough. Son, what He's given me is going to get me home and I'm glad of it. Let's have a song and stand and sing. If there's one that's here, it's lost. I'd ask you to come and seek the Lord. I can tell you what, you'll find Him and you'll find out what I'm saying is true. He's enough. He's enough.